Hi there, welcome back. As you can see, I have quite a few desktops right next to me. They are all here for the same reason, memory upgrade. Especially a lot of you ask lately, how do I upgrade the RAM? This is a super, super easy process. I never thought it's actually any of you would be interested to see this, but since quite a few are requested, let's dive in. So first of all, I have a brand new Dell 2025 desktop in here. It came with eight gigs of DDR5, and we're gonna upgrade this to 64 gig. Uh, the main part of this video, the takeaway, is this particular crucial kit. I went through technically every single Dell machine in from 2025, and every single one of them so far loves this crucial kit. This is a very affordable kit. This is not a sponsored channel, not a sponsored video. I don't have an affiliate links, not making any money, but I'm telling you, you can buy technically any kind of RAM from any manufacturers. Mostly what will happen is even if you buy a faster kit like a 6000, these Dell desktops will downclock the speed of the RAM to either 4800 or 5200. This RAM works and you can mix up the Dell RAM with this particular crucial RAM. You can buy a single stick or a whole kit. It goes from like 16 gig 30 to 6428. This ECS 1250, I think it's rated for 32 gig. But as you're going to see in this video, there's no problem to put 64 in it. The EBT 2250, what we reviewed, that is rated for 64 gig. And this crucial kit, the 128 gig version, works flawlessly. So that's just the baseline that gives you. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the side cover off and just to just to show you what the fan is doing and what the computer is doing do not take the side cover off if your power cord is connected so i'm going to go ahead and plug my monitor in and i'm going to go ahead and plug a usb keyboard in because if you use a wireless keyboard by the time the wireless keyboard wakes up and connects to the pc we usually way past the bios these computers are booting up in seconds so therefore get a usb keyboard because we need to get into the bios Okay, so I'm going to plug in, I'm going to grab my power cord, I'm going to plug it in, and I'm not going to touch the PC, I'm just going to leave it as it is, and see if the PC does anything. Without pressing the power button, the PC turned itself on, the fan is running, the power light came on, and now the power light is off, and the fan stopped spinning. One of you reached out to me and was wondering what it's actually doing while the screen is black. So there were no screen, no Dell logo. It turns itself on without pressing any button and turn itself down or shut itself down. What it's called is a pre-boot check. Every time, in a lot of cases with the Dell desktops, if you unplug the power cord or plug it back or you have a surge protector, turn it off, turn it back on, it does this. It want to make sure that the RAM is present, the CPU is present, the CPU cooler is not only attached to the circuit board but able to spin freely. Uh, as a rocky tech, I made a lot of mistakes when I built a custom computer and did not notice that some of the cables were stuck between the fan blades and the fan was not spinning, or I made the whole build technically flawlessly, but forgot to connect the fan to the circuit board. A lot of things can go wrong, and they'll want to make sure that there's not going to be any kind of damage uh, by caused anything like that I just mentioned. So it does this pre-boot check, and if everything checks, it's going to shut itself down. So I'm going to hit the power button one time, and a PC starts booting. I'm going to slowly start tapping on the F2. Once I have the NAM lock light coming up, this is the point when a PC is really taking a command. So as you can see, we are establishing our baseline. And you can see that we have 8 gigs of RAM, runs on 5600, and we only have DIM 1 occupied. The second slot has absolutely nothing in it, so this is all correct. I'm going to press and hold the power button until the PC shuts down and a fan stops. Again, do not turn the PC on while the, uh, uh, the power uh, cable is connected and the top cover, is the side cover is off. So I'm going to unplug the power cord and I'm going to put it under the keyboard. So... In this particular model, since we have this funnel around uh, the fan, I don't have good access to the RAM. What I normally do is I just rotate the PC and I have significantly more visual help to see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and press on these tabs and remove the original RAM. 
and I'm gonna get this crucial kit and I'm gonna put the RAM in. I'm gonna start with a slot closer to the CPU cooler because it's gonna be easier to put the other one in afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in and gently I'm gonna try to push this RAM into the slot. If there is any problem or difficulty or a RAM just bounces, it means it's not going into the slot correctly. You have to flip the RAM around and try this one more time. And you have to hear two firm click. Make sure you press down a little bit on the RAM and if you try to pull it gently with your finger is not coming out, then it's seated correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the power cord back in and I'm not going to touch anything, not even hitting the power button. See if the preboot check kicks in again. I don't know the light is on, but the fan started spinning. So let's wait. What's happened is the preboot check probably going to take significantly longer because now we have two significantly larger memory module and it needs to be checked or tested. So let's see if the PC will shut itself down or maybe start loading to the BIOS. You don't need to tap on the F2 key at this time because the computer will notice that something changed and it asks us if we want to go to the BIOS and this is exactly what we are going to do. So I'm just going to wait, not pressing anything. As, as you saw, I didn't hit the power button. Just by plugging the power cord back into the power supply, it turned the PC on and as you can see, the fan stopped and I'm assuming the light is off in the front. I'm gonna hit this one time. The fan kicks in and just leave the PC alone. Depends on what computer you have. This first, like going to the BIOS could take anywhere between 10 to 10 seconds to maybe two minutes. Just to check this large amount of RAM and make sure it's all functional. I'm not even tapping on a keyboard. It should take us straight to a message that the amount of RAM what we have is changed. So here we are, we notice a change in your PC total memory. So I'm gonna go to the BIOS setup and I wanna confirm that both modules are occupied. We have 64 gigs of RAM and it's running on 5600. So let's see. So we have 64 gig and we have 5600 and 32 gig, 32 gig now. If this screen is not loading after we install the RAM, there is two things we can do. First of all, let's go ahead and unplug the power cord. And if we made sure that these are seated correctly, while the power cord is disconnected, press and hold the power button for like 20 seconds. All right, so probably 20 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead, plug this cord in and just wait and see what's going to happen. The fan kicked in. I'm assuming the power light is on in the front and it shuts itself down again. So the preboot check is done. Hit the power button and see if it goes in. Now, sometimes after the RAM upgrade, if you're not seating the RAM correctly or the PC does not like the RAM, uh, this is what's going to happen. So I'm gonna remove both modules and I'm gonna plug the PC in and the preboot check kicks in without me doing anything and we should have a combination of orange and white lights blinking in a pattern that the RAM is not functional or missing. So I'm just going to give it a chance to see if it shuts itself down it probably will give up at one point. So if you have this message in here it means the RAM you bought maybe not compatible with the PC or is it not seated correctly? So it shut itself down, turn itself back on, looking for RAM, the preboot check. I'm gonna unplug the cord. I'm gonna move the case towards to me and I'm gonna start with one RAM just in one slot if you have any issues. Let's see if the PC boots or not. So I'm going to go ahead and put this RAM in here. Okay. I'm going to plug the power cord back in. And 
let's see what happens. Again, not touching the power button. All right, so the PC shut itself down. Sometimes it may be doing it twice back to back. So if you see this, then it's going to start again and shut itself down. It's still normal. So now if I hit the power button one time, it should go again with this message saying that the amount of RAM changed. When I go to the BIOS, if you make it, it means it's good. At least one stick works. Let's go to the BIOS and let's verify that we have 32 gigs of RAM, 5600, press and hold the power button to shut the PC down. Okay, unplug the power cord. You don't need to unplug the power cord. For safety reason, it's good. One time or two times it happened to me when I just put uh, the new RAM into the PC. Something somehow didn't go right in a slot correctly. PC turned itself on while the RAM was hanging halfway installed. Ever since then, I'm not doing it. Let's put uh, the uh, another kit, kit back in, RAM in it, and make sure that we are up and running and we don't have any kind of error light. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And I'm not going to touch the power button because the preboot check comes in again for the last time. And once the PC is shut it down, I'm just going to go hit the power button and close the case and move on to the next one. If you have any question regards of memory upgrade on these Dell machines or a custom built PC, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I'll see you in the next video. Scott's out.